Now it's time for what scares a lot of people, which is particle physics. Uh, this t-shirt is actually really naughty. Maybe it's the worst thing that I put in here, but particle physics gives me a hadron because it's a play on words of replaced the R and the D. It's very naughty. So, But I've actually seen some physicists wear this kind of t-shirt. So anyway, we're going to talk about hadrons actually. So we've got particle physics, and um, it all comes from a really basic idea, right? You take the atom, you take the pieces of the atom, like uh, a neutron and a proton or electrons, and you try to break them up into smaller pieces to find out can they be broken up. Turns out electrons can't. So as far as we know, you can't split up an electron into any component parts, but neutrons and protons, they do break up into other particles. Those particles are called quarks. Those are, uh, I think they have a background, I think it's in science fiction. I think there's a book, I uh, can't remember the name of the book now, but they had uh, quarks in them. So a lot of this is named uh, kind of with a sense of humor. You see a lot of the physicists here really had a good sense of humor about naming them. So they realized, imagine this, this is empirical, right? You do this, you split up a neutron, you know, you just smash it together with something else of very high energies. You see it makes these other particles. So they had to give them a name, so they called them quarks. And it turned out there were six different basic types of these particles. So we're gonna call them, uh, these are the six types of quarks. So first we're going to say there's the uh, up, well, well, we'll write them like this, U, C, T, and D, S, B. And then I'll name them all. So U is called up. Now these names are kind of arbitrary, although the, some of them are kind of paired up for different reasons, which we don't quite need for um, IB. But U is up, C is called charm, T is top, D is down. We have S, which is called strange, which I think is a fun one. Uh, and you got B, which is bottom. So this is what you need. So you got up, charm, top, down, strange, and bottom, quark. Those are those six basic quarks. However, each of the quarks has its antiparticle. Now, antiparticles, they have opposite properties. So, for example, charge, baryon number, we're going to talk about uh, lepton number, and strangeness. So, they all have opposite particles, uh, opposite properties. So, for example, there exists something called the, uh, well, we'll write them down again. So, U, C, T, D, S, B, except for each of them, we put a line on the top. So, that tells us it's the antiparticle. So, if you have a up, you have something called the anti up and if you have a charm this is called the anti charm i hope you get the idea here this is anti top uh anti bottom and so on so i think this is uh this is actually really interesting because you have these anti particles and an anti particle is really strange because if if a particle meets its anti particle something very very special happens okay I'll just make sure I spelled this right. So anti-charm, top, down. Because when I'm talking, maybe there's a big chance I made a mistake. Okay, good. So for example, if you have a particle like an anti-up running into an up, so a particle and anti-particle, if they meet and collide, they actually annihilate. They make, well, photons, basically. Um, so this is really interesting. For example, an electron and its anti-particle called the positron, that was something from the nuclear physics part, uh, if an electron and its positron, you know, they're opposite particles. If they meet, they disappear. Poof, we call it annihilation. They make photons. We're going to learn with the Feynman diagrams what that looks like. So basically, you just have to keep in mind there's particles and there's antiparticles. These are quarks. Now, the thing I think that uh, causes a lot of students problems is this is this idea about this sort of uh, the structure of this, like how they're organized and how they're uh, structured. I, I think a lot of textbooks just write a bunch of sentences. They'll say, uh, you can make a lot of particles out of quarks. Uh, you can say hadrons are made of quarks. You know, you can have uh, baryons are made of three quarks. Baryons are also hadrons. Uh, mesons are made of two quarks, where one quark and an antiquark, and those are also examples of uh, hadrons. I think what I said, by the way, is all true. And yet I think if you write it all in sentence form, it's not very clear. So I'm going to be repetitive to annoy you. But because I'm going to annoy you, you're going to learn the structure really well, sort of how they're related. Okay, so this is going to sound slightly annoying. If I'm annoying you, good. It means you know it. So what do we do with quarks? We have the largest scale structure where this is called a hadron. Or like this t-shirt, right? Particle physics gives me a ha-ha. Uh, so what do we do with quarks? Hadron is a particle made of quarks. So just think of that. There's nothing else needed. You take some quarks, 
and you make something out of it, that's called a hadron. That's it. I like to think about hadrons as heavy, so these are like the heavier particles. Now, within hadrons, if you're going to make something out of quarks, you can make two different types of particles. You can make something called a baryon, and that's when it's got three quarks. So again, baryons are just three quarks put together. You can have any of them, except obviously not an up, and it's anti-up, because those will you know, uh, annihilate. But as long as you have any quarks, any three quarks, or even anti-quarks, just choose three out of these 12, so long as there's never like a, you know, a quark and its own anti-quark together. You can have like an anti-top and an up and an anti-strange, I guess. You'd have to check for conservation to see if it's possible. You could check the Feynman diagram, but if you can draw it, then it's possible. But um, if it's made of three quarks, we call it a baryon. That's it. So again, baryons made three quarks, and of course you made it out of quarks, therefore it's a hadron. So do you see the structure? Make something out of quarks called a hadron. If you make three quarks together, that's called a baryon, which is also a hadron because it's made of quarks. See, repetitive. So there are two types of particles you need to sort of memorize or at least know the structure for. You need to know the quark makeup of a proton. So proton is going to be made up of this. It's going to be um, up, up, down quark. So it's got three quarks, right? See, three quarks. That's why it's a baryon. And because it's made of quarks, it's a hadron. It goes up, up, down. Now, does the order matter? No. You could say it's down, up, up. You can say it's up, down, up. It doesn't matter. The fact that it has two ups and a down, that's the important part. A neutron, however, is up, down, down. So it's very similar to the proton, right? It's only that there's a difference between one of the ups is a down. This is a little bit lame how I remember this, okay? But Because you, you do need to know this. Okay, so I'm going to put this maybe in green here to circle it. So you do need to know this one, and you do need to know this one. Those could be asked. It's implied, at least. You'll need to know the makeup in order to continue. Uh, it's kind of lame, but I remember that both of them end in a down. So those are sort of the same. The way I remember the difference between a proton and a neutron, I think like pro means, you know, we kind of use like the word like positive. If you're positive about something, you're pro something. So look at this. You're up, up. It's almost like, you know, you're feeling like up. So you're very uplifted. So it's you're like you're very, very happy. So that's why you're pro. Whereas a neutron, you're sort of neutral. Look, you're up, but you're also a little bit down. You're, sort of, you're in the middle, you're neutral. So I remember that the up, down, that makes me think of neutral. Um, if that's really too lame for you, no problem. Just remember these and you're fine. Okay, so those are the two baryons you need to know about. And baryons, remember, three quarks. And you're also a hadron because you're made of quarks. There's another type of hadron, though. What if, instead of making three quarks together, you put in two quarks together where one is a quark and one's an anti-quark, but not its own. Remember, because if you put a quark and it's anti-quark together, they disappear, they annihilate. So look at this, a meson, uh, it's a particle made of two quarks, like I said, a quark and an anti-quark. An example could be the positive pion. You don't have to memorize these ones, you'll normally, you'll be given the quark makeup of these things. But for example, there's one called a positive pion. Uh, that one, its quark makeup is, let's see here, that would be up and anti-down. Do you see, there's, a, there's only two quarks together. There is a particle and an antiparticle. So this is a meson. This is a real particle. You can actually find this in nature. Uh, some of them are very short-lived, for example, but this is a positive pion, it's called. So this is really important. Again, remember, if it's made of a quark and an antiquark, then it's a meson. And remember, mesons are hadrons because they're still made of quarks. So this is how we can sort of break it all down here. So we've got other particles as well called leptons. These are, because uh, remember, we've got these basic fundamental particles, these quarks. Remember, we've got these six and the anti-quarks. Uh, we've got other types of particles called leptons. Uh, I try to think about the lighter leptons, just like I think of the heavier hadrons. That's what I think about. So lighter leptons and heavy hadrons. There are six types of leptons as well. So let's put those down. Uh, these go uh, as follows. There's one called tau. At least we call it tau. I heard uh, there's one of my students, she's Greek, she told me they, they say it, I think they pronounce it taf uh, in Greek, but I'm going to call it tau. I'll ruin it. Uh, then we have mu, and then we have uh, e, the electron. So this is the tau. By the way, these all have a negative charge. I'll put a little, little minus to the top right here just to make sure we know. So this is called the tau. Some people call it the tau on. This is the mu particle, so some people call it the muon. This is the electron. Hey, that's a particle we know. 
Then we've got something else. Um, here, you got these neutrinos. That's why we use the Greek symbol nu, isn't that clever, neutrino. And we have these little subscript. We're gonna have three different neutrinos. It looks like a, looks like a V that's had one of its branches sort of blown away. Uh, looks like a, you know, a lot of wind has been blowing on this one, sort of bends it. So we put a little subscript. We have a subscript tau, we have a subscript mu, and we have a subscript e. Do you see? In other words, we call this the tau neutrino. Okay, that's what we call this one. We call this one here the mu. Whoops, I should say the mu neutrino or the muon neutrino, some people say. And this one here is the electron neutrino. Now, of course, we have the six antiparticles as well. So we have the anti tau, the anti mu, the anti electron, we have the anti tau neutrino. We're gonna, we're gonna put the anti symbols on top of them in a second here. So what happens here? We have this on top, this on top, this on top, this on top, this on top. Those are the anti particles. Remember, this is the anti tau and so on. So I hope you understand this. Keep in mind though, this particle right here, remember it has opposite charge. So if this had a negative charge, you could technically say this is, you could also write it like this, couldn't you? You could say it's a mu plus. That's also another way of writing this. Just like this, you could write it instead of the electron with a minus charge, you could also write it like this with a plus. By the way, this one has a special name. That's called the positron. So see, we have this electron and its positron. Those are the antiparticle pairs. And of course, it's called the anti-tau neutrino. This is the anti-mu neutrino and so on. And very finally then, I think we have a nice way we can represent the particles. If we write sort of a line like this right here, then we can actually write them all down. So we can say, for example, um, I like to put the U and C and T, and we'll split them up, and we'll put D, S, B. So these are all the different particles we know. This is like our zoo of particles here. These are the quarks, aren't they? So these are here, these are the quarks. And remember, if we put things together, if we make things out of them, these are called hadrons. Remember, I'm just trying to put everything together so we remember them, hadrons. And remember what kind of hadrons we have? If we have a baryon, remember what that is? That's three quarks. And if we have a meson, remember that's two quarks, where one is a quark, one's an antiquark. And on the top here, we're gonna have our, instead of hadrons, we're gonna have our leptons. Those are the other basic particles. Remember, we can split those up and we can say, all right, we have the um, tau, mu, and electron, and then we have the these three right here. These are the different neutrinos. I'm just putting them all down right here just so we can, I don't put little negative charges maybe on them just like this, but these are the actual antiparticles here. And these right here have a little tau, and mu, and electron. These are all our different particles. So this is it so far, these are all the particles. I think it's a nice way to represent it this way. Um, I actually saw this on a movie called Particle Fever and I really loved how they described it. I think it's a lot better than the ways uh, a lot of other people show them. So that's why I use this.